Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we are going to talk about something super cool. First of all, we're going to talk about the number one thing that freaks most people out when it comes to running their own business. I'm not even going to tell you what that is because I bet you your gut instinct is right. If I ask you that question now, what would your answer be? Chances are it's going to be what we're talking about today. But also this amazing guest that I have today is also a Amazon successful bundler. Of course, where do you think he learned all of his amazing skills? Um, right here from Mommy Income. And so he is an amazing client, an amazing person, and also is going to be talking to you about some of the stuff that he's going to do to help you solve this number one problem. You guys want to know what it is? bookkeeping. Do you guys know that accounting and bookkeeping questions come in literally daily from mommy income listeners all the time? We're like, how do you handle your bookkeeping? How do you handle this? What kind of programs do you use to handle all the ins and out and cost of goods and expenses and all these different things? And y'all, I have that all handled, but I am not the expert. So I bring experts to you so that you guys know what to do, because honestly, you need to be focusing on creating successful bundles so that you can have some money to count. So, because if you're not creating successful bundles, you don't need an accountant, you need a job. So now that you're successfully bundling, all of you guys are, right? Right, because if you don't, you need the wholesale bundle system so that you can successfully bundle like today's guest. But also you're gonna need a way to handle all of that money. You guys know, know your numbers is my favorite thing, right? You need to be knowing your numbers. You need to know how much you're making because uh, honestly, you could be making less than minimum wage and you have no idea because you're not doing all these things. But I'm gonna leave that to Chris and the expert. And so welcome today, Chris Loveless to the show. Glad to have you, Chris. Oh, welcome. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Yeah, glad to be here. So I got to tell you guys a little bit about um, Chris. He came, he's been a mommy income wholesale bundler for a while now, and he came to a workshop in the not so distant past, you know, remember the times when we can meet in person. Um, I believe that was last January, correct? Um, That's right. Yep. Okay. And so him and his business partner, Holly Wood. Hello, Holly, if you're listening, I love your name and you know, I still do that. Um, but they, they have together band together. They can't come. They've been bundling before. Then they come to the workshop and then they kill it. Right. So I've bought not one, but multiple bundles from Chris. Here's one of them for you guys, podcast listeners. You can't see this, but this is one of many. Um, these are coffee that they private labeled or white labeled these, these coffee brands, multiple different sample packs. Also some other things in the grocery area that I absolutely love. Some of these are my favorite flavors already. I'm already like a customer. Y'all y'all know you create a successful bundle, you create a bundle. I will buy it from you and leave you a review um, because I love to buy from my customers, my clients. And so Chris, tell us a little bit about you. All right. Well, uh, you forgot one of my business partners. Hollywood has a husband named Jason Wood. So it's the woods. Uh, but uh, anyway, so uh, we've been selling since 2018. Uh, I was looking for a job that I could do from home, like like a lot of people um, had a had a young family and a wife and, and everything like that. So we wanted to uh, just work from home a bit. Um, did a lot of research on tons of YouTube stuff like that. And there are some crazy theories out there about how this business could work. Uh, but then when I came across uh, Kristen and Amy uh, back then, uh, everything just started making sense. And it, it was a basis for a good business. So that's how we got started selling. I think the first thing I did, I went over to um, pick up some medicine at a local grocery store, turned around, there was a clearance rack behind me for some water bottles, uh, you know, bought them all for 75 cents and sold them for $14.99. And then after that, I was like, this is great. This is fantastic. I want to do this forever. Uh, but then I was like, well, I can't find every clearance rack in town. Uh, number one, there's other people in town that sell on Amazon and they're clearing, clearing out the clearance rack. Uh, so I was like, I, I need to find some unique products that only we sell. And then uh, here's Kristen and Amy talking about a way to do that. So that's how we got started. Awesome. I love, I love that you were able to do all that. Cause I love, you know what, when it comes to that retail arbitrage, it, it literally is addicting. Cause like, who doesn't want to flip something from 75 cents to 1499. But the reality is exactly what you said. It's like, eventually you run into the point where heavy competition from other people doing the same things, or you, 
you get something that's awesome like that. And then you can't go buy back and get more. You've just literally run yourself out of business because you're picking from clearance racks. I think it's a great way to kind of get started a little bit of, you know, side hustle perhaps, but when you're talking full-time replace my income, stay at home, make real, a real business wholesale bundles, of course, is, is the best. So, um, you guys have done some grocery bundles, which of course I've been raving about already. Um, the, the jellies and that, that, you know, what I love about that is that, you know, how many times I've suggested bundles in like workshops or even like on live coaching or something like somebody make this bundle and y'all actually did that because <laughs> I said that in that workshop I'm like literally right. it was I was trying to find this jalapeno jelly and it was like sold out and they, they did the store didn't carry it anymore and I had to go to Amazon and found like one tiny jar for like twelve dollars I'm like come on can we get a bundle with this and you guys actually did that so I, I think I'll post a link to a couple of your bundles below here I want people cool. to be able to see what a successful <laughs> one looks like like. So tell me a bit about your bundle journey since you started. Sure. Uh, so uh, we did a horrible bundle uh, before we came to your class. Uh, we went over to Ikea. I mean, I, I love sh who doesn't love Ikea, but I went over to Ikea and, and I was like, let's just put together uh, like a, a kitchen set for like somebody moving into an apartment. I mean, it's a, it's a good idea, uh, but I didn't do the research and I didn't know there was 10 million other exactly the same type of bundles out there. So it was horrible and it just sat out there for six months before we called out on home and then we gave it away to my son and his friends so uh but then we went to the class and uh, started learning about all the different system all the steps to do the research and everything like that and we did make the first bundle based on your suggestion in class we're like we like jalapeno jelly let's go ahead and make some uh we we had been selling a lot of grocery stuff ra uh sourced anyway and it just made sense uh so when we went to your uh your workshop and we did the flayed, uh, trade floor walkthrough, uh, we met a couple of companies that was doing that and, and we found the one that was right for us. And uh, they're not look, they're actually manufacturing and not far from our house. So we were able to drive over there and chat with them and see their operation and, uh, and really start uh, getting a good relationship going. Um, and then it was just up to research listing and then all the logistics of just getting it into Amazon. So uh, it was a lot of fun there. And then with that success, we're like, you know, I'd really like to sell coffee. So uh, then we started doing research in there and we found another uh, vendor at the same trade show uh, that we talked to later on. And uh, we figured had to figure out that whole process. But um, everybody's doing both of those things. We have a couple other grocery bundles and then we also have done some health and beauty bundles. Um, we actually met again this year at Dallas uh, in 2021 uh, when we were going through and I remember uh, we were texting back and forth saying how many bundles did you create at this show and you know we we right. walked we walked around with like 20 and you're like well I've got 55 you know and I'm like <laughs> I'm like I'm like it's horrible I mean she puts us to shame so oh but but it, but it's but it's the same it's the same methodology you, you know go around uh, find something that's selling really well and find things that complement it that that solves a need so um I, I definitely believe in the bundling system so Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. You know, guys, another success story here is that, um, you know, when, when you take action on the stuff, and then that's really the reality is that when you actually go and say, this is the business model that I want to pursue, and you go all in, this is, to, I mean, you guys, you'll have to watch the YouTube video, at least the clip to see this. This is them following the process. They've got, I mean, this is one of, I think, six that's in this or seven mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, you guys yeah, got a lot of varieties here. There's six in that one. Yeah, yeah there's six in this one. I've Already, the other ones I can't show because I already drank them, the coffee. These are like sample packets. And I use a Keurig K cup that's refillable. So I mean, I use the other ones too, but like these ones I like because I can refill them. I can have a different flavor every day if I want to. And this is like, I'm your ideal customer. But what else do y'all notice about this? they have their own label. They have their own brand. No one's jumping on their bundles. They're not worried about somebody coming in because they created their own bundle brand and they're bundling and not just private label or, or white label is really what this is. It's, it's a white label. They already, the, this company already makes these products and you just create your label and use their product, but it's all about just making it convenient 
for the customer, right? You've got those value adds. So you guys are successfully doing that. But, you know, this isn't your only superpower. You've got this, uh, you know, bundling down pat and you guys are, you know, coming back and doing your own thing and kind of, you know, making and growing your business. Um, but then you also have this other superpower that scares everyone to death. It, it doesn't really scare me as much anymore because I don't do it. I just <laughs> hire people like you to do it because it's just not my thing, but I love to know my numbers. So you have this extra, you know, in your former Amazon life, did you do accounting and bookkeeping before this? Um, I've always been involved uh, for government contracting, uh, doing heavy proposals, working with uh, accountants and um, pricing managers and stuff like that. I do have a strong background in numbers, uh, but I didn't actually start a bookkeeping business until I realized that there was a lot of people out there selling like me that really had no idea how they were um, how they were doing. And I really wanted to step in and say, look, let's take a look at what you have. Let's formalize it. Let's, let's get it going. And so, you know, where you stand, you know, cause I mean, the biggest thing that I, uh, <clears throat> that I came across, I was, I was helping one person and, you know, she was retired, uh, but she needed some income. So she started going out and just pulling stuff from retirement, buying a bunch of clothes and stuff like that and sending it in uh, just RA, you know, and she's like, I don't know if I'm making any money. Like every month I make sales, I see money come into my account, but every month I'm also still pulling money out of retirement. I'm like, how long have you been doing this? And she said, I've been doing it for two years. Who am I? <laughs> and I? And I'm like, and you've never put anything back into retirement? She's like, no, I haven't. I haven't had the money to put it back into retirement. I just keep pulling from retirement and I see the money and it, uh, you know, it flips and I come back and then I reinvest that. And I'm like, that's not sustainable. It, where you are in life, you need to be building your retirement because you don't want to be doing this, you know, 10 years from now, because by then, you know, you'll be 75. And <laughs> I mean, yeah, people like to be mobile and shopping at 75, but uh, you shouldn't have to do that. It should be because you want to do that. Right. That is my thing. So well, we got together. I started looking at her numbers and I realized that she had not been keeping track of all of her returns from Amazon and selling uh, clothing tends to have a little bit higher of a return rate because sizes and colors and all that type of thing. And she had misstated her inventory for the last two years. So where she thought she was making a profit, she was actually taking a loss every single month for two years. And she didn't even know it. Oh, these are the kind of nightmares y'all that we can't have in our business. Like we need to know if you're making money. And the thing is, is that the, the, the way you, everybody can do these things differently, but I want you to tell the story again, like, because, okay, some people have QuickBooks, but then do you set it up correctly? Is it bringing in the same amount? And when it comes to Amazon and e-commerce, the problem with that is if your accountant and I'm, you know, Amy used to have horror stories about the accountants that she, a couple of accountants that she had hired in bookkeeping, if they don't have experience with an inventory based business, you better run for the hills. I don't care if they're the top paid CPAs or whatever in, in your area. If they don't understand an inventory based business and or e-commerce, they're not the people for you. And so making sure, like, I don't care if you've got QuickBooks, if you've got this and that, like, I, I can't even, I don't even like setting that stuff up for myself. I'm so scared. I'm going to like mess things up. And when it comes to the taxes and Nexus and who's collecting what and remitting what and all those things, this is where you can talk to the experts there. But I'd love for you to share the story that you were just sharing off air really quick about this emergency phone calls, because guys, this next story is the reason why we need somebody to, and why we need to be on top of our numbers all the time and not just on top of them, but correctly, because there's so many services and accountants and bookkeepers out there that do not understand inventory based stuff, especially don't understand Amazon. And if they don't, they're leaving they're they might be losing you money. Cool. Yeah. So I was talking last night to one of our clients. Uh, he's a newer client. Uh, he was paying us to convert from his old bookkeeping system to a more standardized one. Um, and so we were setting up with QuickBooks and everything like that. And he called me and he said, Chris, I, I have some bad news from my previous bookkeepers. I said, well, what's going on? He said, well, um, <clears throat> they called me and said that all of my income has been overstated for the last 12 months. My inventory valuation is completely off uh, as I've been selling in Canada and Mexico. And all those numbers have been overstated. 
and uh, they were using software that was incorrectly set up to pull in sales numbers from each of these different channels and make entries directly into their books. And I said, well, that sounds like something we need to work through pretty quick. He's like, you have no idea. I'm quitting my job on Friday, like two days from now. And I'm also hiring somebody full time starting today. And I need to know if I can continue with my plans or if I need to go back to my corporate job and say, uh, can I keep working for a little bit longer? <laughs> um, so literally, we had to go through his account all last night together over a phone call, pull all the reports manually from Seller Central in the CSV files they offer, do some calculations on his available inventory and his sales. We had to do manual hand calculations to actually convert it from Canadian dollars to US dollars and from pesos to US dollars to get all that straightened out so that he could have a clear, accurate picture today to make the decision on what to do with his business tomorrow so that he doesn't incur a loss right now when he's looking to do this full time. And this, this guy is a great guy and he has kids and a wife and they all depend on him. And he's very successful at his corporate financial job. Uh, but he decided he wanted to do this business of selling full time. So we got all that done, all corrected for him, all the numbers over to him today so he can make his decision. So this is why there needs to always be a human element of someone who is competent and capable of handling things from Amazon. Because I even had, I have great accountants and bookkeepers that we've been working with for years and they understand all of what is happening. So that is a great thing. But I also myself know enough about everything coming in that I also am the checks and balances system between. If something doesn't seem to add up, I, I know how to bring it all in. But this is what's important about this is that this guy is going to quit. He had already put in his notice. He was leaving his corporate job. I'm guessing he had like a nice, healthy salary. But after building up his Amazon business for several years, he's making the plunge. And he, based on the numbers that somebody else gave him, based on a software program that wasn't entered correctly, this is this is life changing stuff. This is not just a, oh, we can correct this for your taxes. This is this guy is pushing all in on Amazon based on numbers that someone gave him that were not accurate. That is super, super scary. So I'm glad you guys got that fixed out for him. But oh, yeah. the whole point, the moral of the story, people, is that if you don't have the right people helping you with your bookkeeping, um, no matter how big or how small, um, they if they don't understand these types of things, they don't understand Am Amazon's reports and how they add money and take away money like in 15 different columns on a regular <laughs> basis is like, okay, we'll put this on sales, but just kidding, we're taking it out over here. And guess what? We're adding it back over here. And I mean, if you've never seen one of those Amazon reports before and looking at all the, the ways that they move money around and all that kind of stuff, like that looks like Chinese writing to most people, even accountants who have never dealt with that kind of situation. So if you're looking to outsource bookkeeping and this type of stuff, and guess what, guys, you do not have to be making millions of dollars to get your handle on. As a matter of fact, if you're just starting out, now is the best time to get a handle on your numbers because later on, don't start, don't come to people like Chris and when you're a hot mess and be like, I ignored this for five years. Now what? Like, it's insane. <laughs> it's insane to be able to do that. So that was like me and my commotion over here. Cause when I talk with my hands, I'm all over the place. So tell us a little bit about, you saw the need. And that's another thing I love is that's part of research, right? You saw the need in the marketplace for someone Amazon based or e-commerce based that we don't have a lot of accountants or programs or even things like that out there that can help us with all of these crazy numbers in e-commerce. So, um, so you started your business. So tell us what exactly you do. Sure. Um, we're a full services bookkeeping firm. Uh, we do not have CPAs on staff, but we partner with CPAs that are leaders in the e-commerce field. Uh, and so we do the books in the same format and fashion for every one of our clients. And then if the client wants to partner with one of our CPAs, then we send all that information directly to them. Um, and then it's just a conversation between uh, them and the CPA to do taxes, because that's one of the biggest thing that everybody wants is their taxes done correctly. So um, again, we'll do the books and then 
we transition the tax work, uh, but we can also get any tax question answered throughout the year as well. Uh, but in addition to doing your full books, I mean, I'm talking worst case scenario, let's just pretend that you have tons of business ideas and you want to set up five different companies, you know, under a DBA. And, you know, ideally in a business world, you would have a separate bank account for every one of these five companies. But some people decide to run all five companies on the same three bank accounts. So this makes record keeping very difficult. Uh, and that's literally one of the worst case scenarios. So please don't do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, please <laughs> don't do that. We, we're always about legitimate. Like if you're going to set up a separate DBA for this, just just take the extra step to make an extra account so that you know, right. your accountant doesn't want to shoot you. And the other one is, uh, please uh, don't, uh, on a regular basis, make personal purchases with business accounts, uh, because that increases your record keeping and difficulty like tenfold. Um, so, I mean, it's okay. Every once in a while, you'll go, oops, I charged McDonald's on my company credit card, and that's an accident. But if every month you're running your entire family finances and your business finances together, that's a big no-no. You don't, you don't want to do that. So uh, in terms of what we do, uh, we talk with you, get to know your business. Uh, we set up a QuickBooks account for you. Um, we customize it based on your business. Uh, we have developed over time a standard e-commerce chart of accounts uh, for everybody to use. Um, and then we'll say, okay, well, do you do the profit first methodology? Are you a partnership? Are you an S corp? Uh, are you an LLC? Are you just a sole proprietor? All of those things are valid. Uh, we just need to know all that information to set up your books for you to, to make it applicable to your business. Um, and then every month we have a team of bookkeepers and uh, we actually also set you up with a receipt management software, which is wonderful. We have had zero complaints about it, um, but it, you get a free app on your phone for it and you can just snap a pic of your receipt and it's automatically filed. You don't have to rename it. You don't have to file it. It's just automatically filed for you. And that allows our bookkeepers to actually see your receipt, uh, look at it, classify it the right way, and it automatically gets attached to your QuickBooks account. So if you're ever just going through your QuickBooks, you can click on it and take a look at your receipt right there. It's perfect for audits and CPAs and all that type of thing. Can you do uh, that easily with like uh, invoices from wholesalers and things sure. like that as well? Yeah. yeah, you can take a picture of it. If they send it by email, you get a dedicated email address just to forward it. You could just say forward to uh, receipts.mommyincome at the email address and it just goes right in. You don't awesome. do any, you don't do anything else. And it can come from any source. It doesn't have to come from your email specific. Like if you have buyers or you have other shoppers, you know, they can send it right there too. And it's automatically filed. Um, and then they have the, uh, the web portal where if you have things saved on your desktop, you can drag it into. Uh, the other the other thing that's really cool is if your bank is supported, it will actually connect to your bank and pull down your monthly statements. So you don't have to send those to us. We can just look in the software and the statements are there and we can reconcile your accounts to your bank statements for 100% accuracy. Well, isn't so. that fancy? I love all that stuff too, you know, and connecting and, and things like that. Anytime you can automate something, especially something that causes you stress, hello, bookkeeping for most of us, um, then you can do what you're supposed to be doing, which is creating successful bundles, being creative, going to trade shows, finding good products. You don't want to worry about bookkeeping, but you also want to make sure that the bookkeeping is being worried about, just not by you. That's right. So that's what I love about your service. Now, I know you mentioned like, Last time we talked about, um, it's not like a one-stop, it, it's not like, I'm sorry, I'm not saying that the right way. It's not, um, just like this flat fee for every single person, because like my books are going to look different from someone who's just starting out who, with someone that that person that has like those five DBAs and only one bank account, right? Those right. that costs way extra. You guys, if you're going to have five different businesses in one bank account, you're going to be charged for five businesses, not just one, because that's, <laughs> that's a hot mess. And if you took wholesale bundles, you should know better because you, I tell you right up front in module one, um, get it out, get it either an LLC, get a business license, get something and separate everything right now. That's like prerequisite was it number one. So if my students should not be doing that, <laughs> you should charge them an extra fee for that. Perfect. Anyway, okay, so it's not just a, oh, you can't just go to the website and see like a, a price, which makes people annoyed sometimes. But yeah. tell us why that is. Yeah, I mean, everybody's different. Um, all the different just think of the different sourcing models we've already mentioned on the show. You have RA. And so say you're going and hitting all the Walmarts as a source. You could go to 10 different stores in one, 10 different Walmarts in one day and have 10 receipts for your hundred products. 
versus if you go to a wholesaler and you order 100 products in one shot, you only have one receipt. So uh, the role of a bookkeeper, a good bookkeeper, is to take a look at the receipt, make sure we know what it is, and classify it correctly in your QuickBooks. And it does take time. We automate it as quickly as possible, but it still takes time. And you really want us to do that for you to catch errors. You want us to say, oh, well, that's um, that's packing supplies and that's inventory and, you know, that's office supplies, that's office supply food. You know, there's different tax rules behind all of these different purchases for your business. So the reason why it's different is uh, Kristen may generate, you know, 175 transactions a month to do her business. Another one uh, may generate 500 transactions a month. Uh, some very large businesses can do a thousand transactions a month uh, or just a very busy RA person. So <laughs> so you, uh, it, it just takes time because we, we hold our bookkeepers onto a standard and say, okay, well, you're, you're expected to uh, verify and classify this many receipts, transactions uh, per hour. And then we just do a per hourly basis to see, to write size it for your business because honestly in part of my market research I was going through pricing different bookkeeping firms for us and there's some well-known strong ones out there that are leaders in e-commerce field but they won't talk to you for less than six hundred dollars a month for bookkeeping and when you're just starting out that's like that's way out there because uh, you can't afford six hundred bucks you know when you're first getting started uh, but we generally are extremely competitive, uh, like our lowest tier uh, people would be running probably about $150 uh, every single month. That includes the receipt management software, that includes your accounting software, um, as well as we also generate an e-com dashboard report, which is pretty unique in the field, uh, because you want to know as a business owner how your business is doing. You may not really care about you know, how much is in this account versus that account, but you want to know where your problems might be in your, in your system. Uh, just like if you're driving a car down the road, you, you don't know how the pistons are firing, but you want to know if your RPMs are dropping. So that's why there's an RPM gauge on your dashboard. Uh, so we, we look at all the different aspects of your business. So we look at like your, your net margin, your, uh, we look at your, how much profit you're making every month. We're looking at your return on investment every month. We're looking at your expense, your over head expense in terms of one product you sell. So if you're not making enough to cover your overhead, then it's not really worth selling that product. So for instance, you could go out there and go, well, my expenses were 1500 this month. I sold, you know, 3000 items. Uh, you can do the math and say, okay, well, my overhead expense per item uh, should be like $2, you know, and I was doing that completely off my head. Well, seriously uh, though, guys, this is the value in this is not only that it's kind of cu it's customized per, you know, not necessarily customized, obviously you have systems and processes, but it's not like, okay, th th this is only for really established, you know, sellers making 10 grand or more a month. I mean, 600 bucks, I don't care where you're at, 600 bucks a month for any, that's like some people's mortgage. And like, you're trying to start a business and you want to do it right. Or you're trying to, you know, get your duckies in a row. It doesn't have to be an arm and a leg in your firstborn. Um, but I feel like it really should be something because it, it kind of like with the e-com dashboard that you have, that's the most important thing for most Amazon sellers. Yeah, bookkeeping is great. And that's stuff that we can, some of us can do on our own. But the reality is if you can see at a glance that there's a product that you are selling that all of a sudden is selling like crazy, but you're, you're getting a negative margin on each sale. Like you're just seeing something sell and you're like, oh, great. That's fine. You think you're raking in the dough. And what you realize is you're losing $2 and 12 cents per thing because they have missed, you know, Amazon missed it and put it that it, it was three pounds instead of three ounces. And now they're charging you you to ship it for per pound. You know how many times that this has happened? And if you don't keep your eyes out, you just think that you're making sales. I had a client once that was like selling through something like that. And that happened to her and she was replenishing it every single month because she was just looking at, oh my gosh, I'm, I make, these are selling really well. And then she went and realized she was losing a couple dollars per sale for, for like three or four months. She didn't notice that she was losing the money until the fees kind of got high. And she was like, what is happening? And finally figured that out. But like, we don't need to be figuring that out every, you know, six weeks from now, or even six months from now, it's, those are the holes in the bucket that account 
accounting and bookkeeping can really help you do on a regular basis to see, hey, if this product is selling well, but you're making 25 cents on it, is it worth your, especially with bundles, is it worth the time and effort and energy that you're putting into making a bundle if for some reason the, the fees aren't working out and you're making, you know, a, a quarter, you know, that's just not worth the time and effort. So that is super important to have that dashboard. Now, of course, I'm going to play devil's advocate right here and ask you, well, what's the difference then if I can pull all these reports from Amazon myself and I can look at these different things, you know, what is, what's the difference between that and maybe something like inventory lab that has a lot of these reports there. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, what, what would be the, the benefit to the extra dashboard and you guys doing the services for us? Yeah. So number one, inventory lab is not a, an accounting system. It does not pull information from your bank and verify all your transactions. So it, it uh, routinely misses stuff. I mean, even the most conscientious person will forget to enter in an expense in an inventory lab uh, versus having an accounting software that can pull all those transactions directly from your bank and your credit card. And then you just pull the data you need from inventory lab that you know is true on your cost of goods sold, for example, and you just enter that into your QuickBooks. Uh, so yes, you could definitely do that, but I would never say use just inventory lab. Um, it's an inventory management system. It's not an accounting system. Um, but the benefit is, here's another example. I was looking at a dashboard for a client and all of a sudden, all year long, he's been selling stuff. Um, there's, there's a thing, there's a measurement called your inventory turn ratio or your turn rate, how many turns a year you can get on your inventory. And he was selling out of his inventory about every 45 days. And then all of a sudden I did his books and for the previous month and, I, and all of a sudden he was selling stuff out in 22 days instead of his normal 45 days that he'd been running out for an entire year. And then I looked over at his ROI as the second indicator. I was like, well, is he still making money? And I looked down there and his ROI went from his normal 65% down to uh, 19%. I was like, whoa, what is going on? I mean, did he change his model what's you know what's going on so i called him up right away i said i said look uh, this is what i'm seeing in your numbers he's like well perfect it makes sense i'm like the only way you would say that is maybe you were going to be selling out and doing a clearance kmart blue light special if, if you remember <laughs> kmart and he's yeah. like that he's like that's exactly what we're doing we're trying to sell out of all of our stock stock because we're moving away from oa and we're doing 100 wholesale and i was like okay good well i just want to let you know that uh, that's what I saw on your numbers and I'm glad you planned on that so there's no emergency here and he's mm -hmm. like well thanks very much for giving me the call and just verifying that it, it it really means something to me that you would give me a call and and let me know of an issue that you're seeing right away when you saw it so that's yeah that's usually like when you do. get the yeah. calls from the accountants there's usually something wrong <laughs> like no news is good news so if your accountant is calling you better answer because there might be a fire to put out no i love that not only the personal service that you have there but the, the keeping your eyes on things that change and that's really the thing that when you start getting a bigger business or you start getting to the point where if you're doing many successful bundles there's a lot of moving parts and so if you've got somebody that just has an extra pair of eyes on your numbers to make sure that something wonky like that's happening because that could have just have been a reply a repricing error somehow that yep. then they didn't catch and they didn't notice and maybe they're you know going to be pumping more inventory in thinking they doubled their sale through when really they actually reduced the income by a significant amount i mean going from 65 percent roi to 19 is super low and so having an extra pair of eyes on your dashboard to make sure that you're not missing something Thing. Um, this is this is good stuff, y'all. This is good. Someone's got your back, and there's nothing better than having somebody have your back, especially when it's not your wheelhouse or it's not something something you always want to sweep under the rug. I, I, I'm gonna admit today, like by the time this episode airs, um, the tax deadline will have come and gone. But what you don't know is that as of right now, it's looming. And my personal, my business taxes are always done early because my accountants won't let me not do that. Um, but my personal taxes are still sitting here in a pile because I tend to put that off till the very last minute um, every year because I don't know, I just don't like writing checks to the IRS. <laughs> 
<laughs> so literally my post dated April 15th because why give them any more dollars than they already have taken out of my pocket anyway. So um, I am a last minute Lucy when it comes to my taxes, but it's not because I don't have my duckies in a row. Really, it's because I don't like to give them any money ahead of time. <laughs> Well, good. I mean, good news this year for 2021 is the tax deadlines have been extended till May. So, well, you have, you have I'll be damned. <laughs> you just gave me another 30 days. <laughs> I do not need an extra 30 days. But you know what? I tell you what, I, it is one of those things that's pushed off. So, Chris, where can everybody connect with you and learn more about this amazing service that you're now offering? Sure. We have our website, it's uh, www.lwtservices.com. Um, I'm sure it'll be in the show notes and everything like that, but you can go out there and if you want to talk with me about your business, you can schedule a free consultation. Um, my calendar is directly out there as well. So just grab an appointment time that would work for you. And again, there's free, no obligation. We just uh, talk a bit about your business, uh, help you define what you're really looking for, and then I can give you a price. Um, and we do everything from just, uh, we offer discounted QBO subscriptions. If that's all you want, um, I'll set you up and let it run and I'll bill you directly and you'll get it at a discount off the street price for as long as you're um, using my firm's account. Um, we can we can do that and set you up a chart of accounts. Uh, so then all you have to do is connect your bank accounts and go, or we can do full service for you and, and do everything that you need uh, in terms of your books. So uh, we also do uh, consulting and counseling. Uh, when you go out there, you would see uh, another option for business planning. So I, I put together a training course uh, for people uh, to, to do all this on their own because, you know, there's the ones that want to do it on their own and there's the ones that really don't want to do it on their own. And one of the aspects of that course is going through learning about all the different numbers. And then at the very end of it, um, being able to come up with a business plan using your numbers like I need to bring home $3,000 every month. What does my business have to look like if I'm going to be bringing home $3,000? And I said, okay, well, you need to know your expenses. You need to know your ROI. You need to know your profit margin. You need to know your average selling price. You need to know your turn ratio. Um, you need to know your uh, average Amazon fees paid every single month. Um, you need to know all these things. And then you can plug it into uh, the template that we have. And you can actually come up and say, okay, well, that means I need to sell um, 1,800 items at $25 a month. And uh, over this time frame with my ROI, I need to make sure that's always 45% or higher. And then what that means for me is I need to be sending in or sourcing every day 35 products. Like, and that's your daily goal. I mean, it's broken down to that. That is super fantastic. You know, what's funny is that I'm one of those, like, I'm not a super, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not scared of numbers. I actually love business finance and finance numbers, stuff like that. That's how I used to break stuff down. I literally have sheets of paper like that when I was first getting to the point where it's like, okay, how much do I really need to get, make X amount of dollars? And I would figure it out in that way. I mean, of course there's software and things like that now, but like how many products at $25 at 75% ROI do I need to sell or source or whatever in order to make a certain amount of money. It's not necessarily complicated, but it is something that if somebody else can do for you, you can take that and make it actionable. So if someone comes to you, Chris and his wonderful team and his solution here for this, then they can say, okay, you tell them I want to bring home in order to quit my nine to five, I need to bring home, take home pay four grand a month. They can backtrack that with all the different things you put in to basically say at this ROI and this and this and this, this is how much you need to sell um, retail versus or like Amazon sales is totally different than your in your pocket, right? So right. that is an amazing service that you offer there because so many people I think need that more than anything else because they don't necessarily understand that. They don't understand that if you've got 15 bundles making $15 each and you're selling 10 a day, like that that whole thing, you know, sounds like a story problem from fourth grade. But the reality <laughs> is, is that that's how we do these things to kind of figure out what, how many more, because people ask me that all the time, right? How many bundles do I need to make per month? How many bundles do you make per month? People ask me that all the time. And I'm like, well, it's complicated because some bundles, like what we have one right now, bestseller, can't keep it off the shelf the moment it launched. Like it's just really, really doing well. But we know that it's kind of trendy 
And in six months to a year, it's not nearly going to have the same velocity. Other competition is probably going to come in, not our bundle, but other ones will start coming in. And then it's going to kind of bring more saturation to the marketplace. So we always look at that like, okay, we have these steady eddies over here and we don't want to discontinue those for something that's trendy. So we kind of balance that out about how much do we need to keep in stock of this versus putting all the money? Because guess what? Money's limited. Like I don't have budgets to just like buy every bundle and bundle idea I have y'all there's just too many I mean I have like a thousand bundle ideas but I don't have you know I'm not Warren Buffett so I can't just buy everything <laughs> I have to like bring it to like a bring it to a whole which is why you come to workshops and you can get some of my bundle ideas and then actually go do them like That's Chris right. and his team has done um and so I really appreciate that. Again, you guys, it's lwtservices.com. Make sure you tell them that Mommy Income sent you because I don't know, people are just treated special when they tell them that Mommy Income sent them. That's true. Um, and so, um, you know, clients are, we, we share, you know, this is like the rising tide raises all ships and I want to support people who are doing awesome things. And Chris and his team are doing awesome things over there. So make sure that you reach out to them. Of course, everything will also be in the show notes here. And if you guys are not part of the Facebook group that's where you can come and ask certain questions and just don't be shy about saying hey i'm new i don't know about this i don't know about that mommyincome.com slash join us keyword today is chris chris with a k um y'all know you need a key a code word because people try to come in there and start selling you like fake ray bands and stuff like that and we just don't need all that drama we want to help each other um, grow we want to help each other quit our nine to fives and work on amazon full time and um there's just no there's no room for drama in there so um you Use your code word, hashtag Chris. Make sure you go to lwtservices.com. Get your duckies, meaning your books. Keep your duckies in a row and you won't ever regret it, especially that last service he was talking about. You guys, that is gold and you can't find that anywhere else, which is why I love it so much. So again, thank you, Chris, for being on the show. Thank you for being a super rock star bundler because now you have two superpowers. Um, keep bringing the bundles because you know especially if it's like a food thing i mean i didn't get this way watching people eat you know <laughs> and next time i'm in dallas or next time we're together we got to go back to rodeo goat because uh best uh, burgers yep. ever there i can't That's wait to really see you again food. at some point and um, i'm sure we'll be in touch you guys thank you for joining us i know you could be anywhere else at any other time listening to any other person i don't take that for granted i thank you so much for coming and listening to the amazon files every single week if you are so inclined please leave me a five five-star review so that, you know, Apple podcasts will like, I don't know, like boost it to the top or something. They say they do that, but you know, whatever. So thank you so much. We'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon files.